Peace and blessings, and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair worlds. By fixing your credit score, you can help yourself get out of debt and take away the things that hinder your process in keeping your money. So to open your money, open your wallet to keep your money and not to pay out money for debts, it would be wise to fix your credit score. If you're looking to do that, contact Transparent Credit Repair at www.transparentcreditrepair.com or you could call them at 862-250-5122 and tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you to get something very special in your transaction. On this episode of the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast, we talk to the freshman, a newcomer when it comes to music that represents those Philly streets, not only for those who are out in the streets, but for those who want to take their minds away from the things that give them pain. We introduce to you Rail G's, and this episode is dedicated to the fathers out there. We hear a lot about the ladies, we do things for the ladies, but sometimes the fathers are just as forgotten in this society as the history of people of color that help make this society. So this episode, we give it to the dads out there. So salute to all of y'all, and pay attention to this interview because you're going to get something special out of it. I guarantee it. I'll be back with the rest of my commentary soon after. Ready, go. All right, all right man. Listen, um, I want to say a shout out. Big, 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 big shout out to my old head. Rest in peace. My man, Lee, Lee, Lee Mitchell, a.k.a. Lisa Mitchell. I love you, Dad. 81 years. We've been together. We've been doing it since Kobe, since Kobe and Shaq, dog. We've been doing it. We're locking high, locking low. You know, I could have left and got my own life, but I stayed in the rock with you, and God, I thought God wanted me to do it. We might have our bumps and downs. We might not always agree on everything, but one thing for sure, we all love each other, you know what I'm saying? And, and I wouldn't have traded for the rest of them. To, for, for the, I wouldn't trade it for nobody else, man. Love you, Dad. It's your son, Real G's, and I wanted you to, get, I wanted you to see this house. I'm going to get you in Georgia, but it looks like you ain't going to be able to see it. But watch, you see your son going to be a legend soon. You'll see in the sky. Love you, Dad. Peace and blessings, and welcome back to the Heritage Hip Hop Podcast. This is Karev speaking, and on the line right now, I got somebody who represents Philly Love. Introduce yourself to the people. <laughs> the Philly Love represents Rel G's, the one and only, the GOAT, the legend, the man, the myth, the new new kid on the block, whatever you want to call it. Thank you, uh, Karev, and thank you for inviting me on to the, uh, to the radio station, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm honored. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure good to talk to you because... If you haven't known, if you don't know anything about Heritage Hip Hop, we are not the typical outlet that does interviews. Because I really don't care why you started doing music. I care about the reason why you do your music and your message. So let's start from the beginning. Well, G's is a voice that comes from the inner city that gives hope to the people who understand his message. What is the message that you want to give, and how did you get influenced to give that message? Oh, man, that's a good question. Very great question. Um, well, getting yeah, my message to, um, to start my music journey is just, just, I just, you know, I, I, well, first of all, I just want to give God thanks and give God glory for one, because, you know, he gave me the talent and the gift to do it. Now, some people may not understand why some people do things, what, why they do it, but, you know, I know why I, I'm, on, I'm on my mission to do what I got to do, because, you know, I just, I just give people hope, especially a lot of independent artists. Uh, giving hopes and a product of, you know, just, you know, just keep pushing forward. Cause a lot of people told me I could never do it. People were always jealous of me. People say I could never do this. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do this. And I always was told I never could uh, do anything, but I've always beat odds. So I use those, I use, I use me, you know, people, when people say I couldn't do nothing, I prove them be a living, I, I like to be a living testimony. They said that you can and, and you will do. I don't take no for an answer. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what my goal is to, uh, to uplift people, uh, talk about my own life experiences, and, and hopefully use my life experiences as a as a tool to motivate others. That's that's you know that's what life period when you're supposed to do anything you do. But that's what I try to do. I try to you know use my music as an outlet to try to reach out, reach to reach to people mentally, emotionally, physically, whatever you spiritually, whatever you needed to do. I just wanted to be a blessing, you know the. Uh, also to, to, you know, let's be a blessing to the people, you know, and, and, you know, I try to, you know, and I try to, you know, don't forget God as well. My, and I, I try not to, you know, get over it, zealous, which I don't come, I humble do, but I just try to use my, my music as a, as a passion, a tool 
to, you know, to just help people. That's what kind of my big message. Word. Well, and the thing is, especially when it comes to young black boys or young men of color, whether they be Hispanic or West yeah. Indian, American born, a lot of the men are always told or beaten mm-hmm. to the heads of taught that you won't be nothing or yes. you don't expect nothing great of yourself. Yes. Yes. Why do you think it's important for us yes. to always refer back to our inner self to prove them wrong? Mm-hmm. I love it. I love what you just said. The key word, y'all, when my brother just said that, was a very good question. Everybody should, everybody in their lifetime should get a question like that to answer. And 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 even with our young black brothers, and like you said, and we and we love all we love all lives matter on the show. We 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 preach all lives matter. But just to take just just to uh, just to just do a black lives for the second, you know, we always were told most generations. Uh, when you look at blacks, especially black and Latinos, you always look at they always been minoritized and always been told we can't do this and we can't do that. But it's best that we do because we have to show people that you know that you know God has made us strong in our own individual way too and as a whole. But we sometimes let the media and other races in the government you know tear us apart so bad that you know we we, we, we you know we're so used to being. You know, mentally, you know, slaved and slavementized and oh, we, oh, we, we gotta bow down and kneel and, and we, we so always look, we always, as, as we always, our, our problem is with, in our culture, we, we always, we can contest it just that we get stuck in the past so much. We don't never let go. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn to forgive first. You gotta first, first forgive people. Before you forgive people, you forgive yourself and then forgive the people that did to you. I mean, it's easier said than done. But you have to because you never can get blessed that way if you keep going back in the past. You got to move forward, one. And once you find out that question, why, that's when you can unlock the power and to know what you got to do. And I think we, until as a black people as a whole, we learn why, you know, we, we, we've we been beaten battered, why people don't, we, we're not going to only be liked or why, and just learn how to just go through life and, and don't let them, let those excuses and, and procrastination bother us, then I think that's how we can move forward. That's a very good um, segue because I'm going to talk about with you moving forward wow. while having the past actually influence our movement. And it comes from it comes from the music that you have put out on The Freshman, which is out right now wow. so anybody who wants to hear Rail G music. I want to talk to you about some of that influence that helps you create your music. You are a person who's in the Nate Dogg, Domino type era of hip-hop where you're actually harmonizing the lyrics to reach the soul of the listener. Wow. Why do, wow. why do people from the inner city always think that you have to have a hard lyric and that harmony cannot reach the soul of the listener? You know why? Because I, I think because they're so – I think they're afraid of being uh, true to themselves or, or not too feminine. I ain't trying to sing – and uh, that's, that's too gay or, or, or that's not that's not cool or, or they're afraid of what somebody said. But in actuality, R&B was always a, a gateway to help hip-hop artists move forward, as we see now, the younger generation. Lil Durk is using it a lot. Uh, uh, a Boogie, uh, P&B Rock. He, he, the, the, the P&B Rock, was he was in jail. He was in jail. He was a, a hard-skinned, light, a hard-nosed, skinny, light-skinned kid. But doing time, and now... He came out of jail and became big, and now he's doing R and B, R and B, and then doing does rap a little bit, and he sings his R and B. All he did is sing. Uh, Chris Brown's doing it, Trey Song's doing it, R. Kelly did it. So I mean, so um, be, using using um, you don't have to have a hard lyric or try to be tough. Now, if you live that life, that's one thing, but you ain't gotta try to exercise your muscle or try to be strong to show people that you are. But that's gonna come off. When people notice you, you're, 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 um, when people see you, they'll see, oh, strong dude, you're a strong brother. Uh, you 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 got to flex your muscle on every track because some tracks are not called for that. You know, you got to always got to talk with people. You, you know, they say, you know, you know what they say in church. You got to reach people where they're at. You know, right. drug addict, uh, uh, um, uh, drug addict, drug, 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 uh, drug addict, uh, sex, uh, sex offender, sex abuser. Homosexual, whatever it is, everybody you got to be. You got to deal with people in different ways. 
you got to reach people to where people can understand you. So where other people, where other people can just bash you in the head with it, well, maybe this other brother, well, this brother, he might not be as aggressive, but we can under, but, but we understand his message. So it's all it's, it's ways of multiple ways of how you do it. You know how you reach people, and everybody is in a different way. Everybody learns things differently. So that's up to us as musicians to understand how people think, and and don't now. I'm not saying don't you don't 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 let people control you. Now I mean you got to put the message out, but you got to understand your your um your your, uh, your 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 audience and what they like, and you know, and, and that's how you know get better. I think the father of that style that you're talking about is TQ. You ever heard of TQ? TQ, I, 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 I've heard, I've heard of him, but I never really got to really learn yeah, of him. Really but I would like for you to. TQ, TQ is the father of that style because he's the one who took the Nate Dog was a harmonizer. <laughs> yes, he was. Yes, Domino was not a harmonizer. He was like a, um, a, he's like very on time with delivery. TQ okay. is the one who took the street and really put harmony into it over a hard beat to convey a message. And I think if TQ came out today, he would be a, he, he would be the one who would be the head of that genre. And the reason why I asked yeah. about, yeah, I think he would be the father, I mean, the, the, head, the head of the genre. And the reason why is because when 90s R&B fell into 2000s R&B, a lot of the MCs yeah. and the singers start looking the same. Yeah, you know what? I, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. And then, that, and then that, and then that's when we go back to the, cause I want to talk to you about this, especially cause you're from, you're from Philly. And Philly is the home of some of the most hardest, gangsterous people who did R&B. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, yeah. like, 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 when we go back to the, to, to the times of the 60s, 50s, 60s, and even the 70s, even if you talk about first choice, with the, with the dance music, you had some of the most gangster street people who could harmonize the people had to respect not only that they pulled the girls, but they were very true to their lifestyle. Why do you think uh -huh. it's important today for people to always be true to their lifestyle, no matter how they um, present their music? It's, it's very important to be true to your lifestyle because people can see the, the, authentic, the authenticity and, and the realness and, and the rawness. It's, it, it's like, when you, let's, let's say you go to a, a, a bakery, right? When you watch a bakery, there's different steps to layer a cake. So before mm -hmm. layer, before you saw it, before before you before you saw the um the finished product, you had to start somewhere in order to get that that to that place. So you watch the the, the bakery, the bakerist, you, you know, you do this, you do this, and that. They want this flavor, you put this topping here, do that there. They bring it down, make it big dough, you know, whatever. They bake it up, flip it up, and and they make it to where you know all the, with all the ingredients. You got to make sure the ingredients, you know, stick with them. So, you know, and then once the cake is done, now it's a masterpiece. Well, just like it, it, it yourself. Uh, uh, the, a, a, a wise woman once told me the only thing good that you even spoken of. Uh, you never want your, you never, you never want your, um, you don't want your person, you don't want people to mistake you over one mistake you make because you weren't being true to yourself. So you <laughs> always got to, even though your music, you got to be raw. Not only just in your music and, and true in your music, but you got to be true also in yourself as well. Because if you don't practice what you preach, I tell you, you already know whether it's spiritual or physical, people won't come at you. So you always want to always have your sword sharpened and always have your book ready to when to when you're ready, so you'll know like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I know you might not agree with this, but I know what I stand for, and I and I, and I do this for a reason. And now people can see, oh, well, I see why you're so true and, and authentic in what you do. Oh, that's odd. That's kind of what I think. Okay, so there's a truth that you relate in your relate in your music when we talk about "I Go." Tell me about the track "I Go" and what's the truth that you're relaying in that song? And I go. Uh, that's a funny. Actually, the funny you asked about that song. I was, I was surprised you picked that song. A lot of people like that song because um, um, we all. To be honest, it was all a never team effort. Uh, an artist of mine, um, uh, an artist a friend I worked with, La, um, Adonis, you know, rapper Trey Prada, and 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 also uh, me, of course. Um, we all, we, we all, well, we all, well, originally us, uh, me, La, and Adonis had the original idea, but La had the original idea. She made the idea, but we just we just played a part in putting it together. She just let me 
had a song, of course. But um, she um, but but you know, we all the, the goal was the lifestyle was um to show that um that to, to have um it was a summer it was basically the goal of the summer song was stash a uh, style flash on uh, uh, basically you know uh, showing people showing um viewers that you know living enjoying their life and, and living your life to the fullest. You know, good vibes, great vibes. That that was the um, the goal of the song to motivate people and to um, to uplift people to like you know, you know, listen, just because you you may not got this, but you you got this, or you don't got this, you got that, and is um to you know just to take take um, the viewers into a trip in our song to let you know that you know, I mean, you know, I live in any other time I go, go, short time in the time I go, let's go. Uh, 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 uh. It just—it's like you know, uh, it's it just everybody you know. Listen, just get up and go. It just do you. That's kind of what the vibe was with that song. But well, why in today's music is everybody not doing them? They're doing everybody else. Because even with even with some of the stuff I had today, everybody has the same flow. Yep. And, 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 and that's not really—that's not really doing you. That's doing the trend. So how does how does you how does Rare G's does do him and not do the trend? Wow, wow! You know what? I I I think it's like I think it's what Floyd what Floyd always say: work hard, work hard. Yeah, I think I I gotta take Floyd's standpoint. It, it, the more hard work, I mean, you you come in the industry doing you first. You guys, you can, it's always it's okay to do a trend now and then, or try to show your versatility. There's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with that. But what I try to do is, bro, what I try to do, bro, bro, and honestly what I try to do, I try to do my flow first. And when you think, when you watch the freshman, my goal is to show you all the, the versatility of my music. I didn't want to be someone that's, oh, that's a, that's a, I mean, some people could compare me to, I heard Nate Dogg, some people said Young Thug, or some people said, some people said, uh, Biggie, or I, I got new school, I can compare new school and old school. I've heard so many, Different comparisons, but but I, but my main surgery surgery want to let you know. I wanted you guys to know because I will. I'm gonna start off as a singer first. So as me being a singer and incorporating my rap, what I've learned how to build later and work on, and still work on constantly. You know, I just wanted to be a double dynamic. So now that I got a double dynamic, I can use that in the, as an effect. Uh, you know, just to just to just to make my music pop a little bit, but also not try to do the fast. Uh, I can do that flow like everybody else do, but I try not to. I try to use my own flow first. I can speed up fast, or I can go slow. It doesn't matter because the Philly rapper, you know, Philly rappers, they have the, uh, the authenticity to, to start off slow and then go fast, or start fast and then go slow. I had that versatility, so I try not to do the trend. I try to do my own lane first before I do a trend, but before I, I do trends later, I can like my I go song. A lot of people didn't know I can. I can with that that flow there. That actually. Uh, I surprised shock line all of the people on the track because they said, "Damn, bro, we didn't know you can flow like that." I got that was that was the that when I did the song and the harmonizing and all that in the background. They didn't know I could do that flow at the end. Toward the end, they said, "Damn, we know you do that." That was just a, that's a surprise. I just bring that out when it's time to bring that out. But don't okay. don't overdo it. That's what people do. They overdo it. Yes, they do. And see, that's what I'm. That's what makes me so upset when it comes to the game because. Everybody's trying to hit a home run, but not understanding that by pacing yourself and building your sound, not only do you incorporate your talent, but you're actually making the listener pay attention to you so they could comparing you to somebody else. Mm. I want to I want to say I want to say I can't compare you to other people that come out of Philly because everybody from Philly is known for having a clarity, a tone, and a and, and, a, and, a, and a punchline. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What is the Philly scene in your in your definition, and how do you perfectly fit into the Philly scene? Actually, I like what you said. I mean, you, you're very right on point. A lot of a lot of Philly, we all know for raw and Philly very raw and talented, and, 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 and you know very rugged. So you, you look at Cassidy, you look at uh, State Property, and you, you, you look at um, State Property, you look at. Um, Will Smith, and, you know, you look at um, Jill Scott and his own child, and, you know, um, even though it's raw, don't get me wrong, he, even though it's raw and whatnot, but um, you still have a lot of, but a lot of, but Philly, but Philly uh, has a lot of mixture in it, because you still got R&B and hip-hop. 
So I still kind of fit in the, in the, I fit in the, uh, uh, trainer thing because, you know, me, Nelson, and Lil and Lil Uzi and PNB Rock took, took him at a different level to where now it's more comfortable. We can do, you can be a, a, a rapper and emo or a pop and rap or, 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 or um, a rock and rap. And you, so I think they kind of opened the door to where, where it's kind of more for utility. I mean, well, actually, it started from Will Smith. So Will, I mean, from Will, Will Smith with the rap scene, you know, I mean, cause he was, wasn't really raw, but he was smooth. And Daddy, mm-hmm. and Daddy Jeff. So, so you know, they're, 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 you know, and so I mean, it's, it's um. So I kind of feel, I still, even though you, I'm different, but you still have my rawness in my music as well, like real talk. Uh oh. Um. You know, well, those those the, uh, those those two songs. Yeah, you 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 uh, and drop below actually, drop below real talk and oh, you can hear the rawness, the Philly rawness in me in those three songs. So I still got him, don't be wrong. It's like a jab. Like don't 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 come on, don't sneak on me. I still can get that jab off. Don't just because I'm big, I can still I can still sneak it in there when it comes in the boxer bite. So it's kinda of like how my music is. I still even though I'm different, but I still got the little rawness and the authenticity in it. Facts. I like that. Cause when we think of Philly, right? Especially in today's genre, everybody always equates hip hop to music. So people will bring up Will Smith or Meek Mill, Benny Siegel, Freeway, of course, salute to all of them. They always do. But you know who really, who really personifies Philly to me? What, anybody? Aaron Owens of the N1 mixtapes. AO was the one, AO was the one who really incorporated Philly because not only did he never have, he had a never stay die attitude. Him and, my, him and Marvin Harrison, they were the type that was like, they were the type that was like, we from them streets, but we know how to carry ourselves in a way where we let that street mentality take us to the next level. What is the I next like level? Okay. What is the next level like for, for, for Rail G? How is he going to get there when it comes to music or anything else that he wants to put onto the, um, the table to show the world? That's a good, that's a very, I like how you use them too as an example. So Marvin Harrison still had that, what you call him? He was quiet on the coast. He wasn't really loud, but he still had that. But don't. But but, but listen. I, but listen, you saw him in the club when they had a scrap, whatever. And you know when he got you know in trouble with that. But I still got my street mentality. Don't play with me, nigga. Like that type. Thing. <laughs> they still they still they do. And right. you know, me, uh, I tried to um, I kind of emulate Kevin Hart's persona because. Um, uh, Cause me, me, me had, me had gotten better on it, but in the beginning, you know, he, he kind of brought that thing. Sometimes when, when some people get rich, they kind of bring that, well, well, not the older, well, yeah, well, some of the older generation too. Some of the older and the new, from Benny Single and Dow, you know, they kind of brought that hood mentality into the industry. And sometimes you, you can't always bring that hood mentality stuff when you're doing big things. You can't, I mean, it's one thing to, to rap about it here and there. Uh, Jay tried to, when Jay-Z and, and tried to school them, they didn't really want to listen. Now, Jay's not no perfect saint, but, you know, he tried to school beans in them, but they didn't want to listen. So that's why they could have, they could have been bigger than what they were. Even, even, even as big as they are now, they could have been way bigger, but they didn't want to, you know, do certain things. They didn't want to do this. They didn't want to do this and do that. So my thing is to be better. I do want, when, when I get on, and I'm always going to work. I mean, there's a time to go out and have fun, but I'm always working my craft. I'm going to work like I've never had nothing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a always do it. I don't want to never, I don't never want to, the only time I want to feel comfortable unless when all the work is done. When all the work is done and I finish my time when I'm in the, in the studio, when I'm out of the studio, mowing and stuff like that, when I finish that, and let's sit, then I'll, you know, get back into the swing of things. You know, you gotta, you gotta, my, my old mentor always told me, you always gotta, you know, you, you always work, you always keep working, man. the grind never stops. So that's what I want to do. I want to always keep grinding. I never want to get to the point where I'm very, 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 very comfortable. So I think that's my difference, what I'll do. When I get into the industry, I want to always, you know, work and don't bring that hood mentality stuff all the time. But, you know, to just just be business and have people take you serious because you don't want people not to, you know, respect your craft and your, uh, and, and, and your authenticity. authenticity. Word. But, see, I, you said one thing I did not like, and you said when you get on, you're already on. It's not even about the major label. It's about branding yourself and making yourself a powerhouse. What is Darrell G's brand, and what is your power? 
Mm, red. I'm all, you're right. Actually, I, you know what? I am. You're right. But I, I, I kind of take myself. I, 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 even though I'm on, I try like to. I still try to make sure that I'm, that I'm still working. Let you know that I'm still, still, you know, still, 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 still working. And I think the brand. My my brand is kind of like you know grind. I got a, I got two shirts that's called um the um the my the, my, uh, my OG uh child of Ronald Henderson made me uh grind all day. And, I, and, and from my own song I did when I was doing tracks in Delaware with my mentor, Richard Brainiac, shout out to 302, the uh, producer of Delaware, uh, Richard Brainiac. Um, we had two songs called Peace and Grind, and then Grind All Day I did back, uh, two, three, four years ago. And Grind All Day is always like my, 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 uh, my brand and my slogan. Because, you know, you always got to work hard, you, cause, you know, you gotta, you get, you gotta spend money to make money. Whether you, 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 you work, yeah, you, you, you got you got to work a nine to five or you know, trap in the streets, whatever you gotta do to make that money to put into your craft to make it to make you be successful. You gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes it's called making sacrifices. A lot of people, especially in this area, don't like to make sacrifices. They want things handed to them. But so, yeah. So I try to. So I tell people like the young artists now, they want all this and want a manager to do this and all that. I said, well, you realize that the, that manager that you want to do. You know, you got to pay that manager, you got to pay the labels, you got to pay the managers, the bands, the recording studios, and all that stuff you you want. You want somebody to pay you. Nothing is free, and nothing is free. They're going to give you an advancement, and they're going to basically say, well, that's the money we put on you, but we want our money back. So they don't, the young people don't seem to get that, you know, especially Philly artists. They want to, oh, we'll do this and do this and all that. They want the discounts and this and discount that, but don't want to put the work in to get a discount. I, it bothers me, but you know that's what my brand is. I want people to see that you know what other money we gotta put. You gotta put it out. I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with saving money, but you gotta work with people, build the brand, spend that money to get to where you gotta get to. If it's positive, then do it. That, but see, that that comes with understanding what branding is, because as an artist, I'm gonna tell you like I tell every other artist. I don't care if you're from Philly, Jersey, New York, whatever. You could be from Mars. If you don't have a Schedule C form when you are industry artist or not, you basically don't know nothing about yourself. You don't really have confidence in yourself. And if you're not, and if you don't really know what a Schedule C is, look it up because that's the only way you could be successful with or without the label. The label is not really important. You are important because you are the bag. So while everybody says I'm out chasing the bag. You're not chasing yourself. You're actually giving yourself away. And that's not how to become a brand or to be successful. Ooh. You may be popular, but you're not popping. It's a difference. Ah, I like that. I like that, actually. I like that. Well, let's go back to you. Because I want to focus on you in this interview. And you have a single out now called Get High, correct? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. tell me about the inspiration of that song and even the visual. Because even with the visual with you in your chill mode, you're still making sure that the camera catches you at your high point, high, high, at your high moments, not your feel, at your high feel good moments, but your high in the zone moments when you perform. Tell me about the song and how that came about. The song came about actually, and I tell people um, when I do the interviews, I always say that this was this idea I had was I had it for a while because I want to do. You know, we all we all heard that we had many we heard Snoop Dogg, we heard Wiz Khalifa's, we heard a lot of different get high songs over the years, and it's been it's kind of the same, it's always been the same. So I said, well, you know what? Let me do something different where I can grow up with my, with, as you said, the Nate Dogg and TQ and that flow and brand. I wanted to bring my R and B in this element, even though the R and B was that was like, um, you know, in a boxing, in a boxing fight, you know, the jab is, 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 is your is your most important punch. For the knockout punch, right. um, that's what that's what I want to do with the hook. And you know, with the hook, I, I draw people in with that hook. I let the people. I want to hope to draw people because you don't think when you're using the beat because all you don't expect me to say. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. And then when I draw people, in, I think they say, "Oh wow, okay, I see me going with it." And then the verses were more just like to be chill and mellow and just a vibe and to just to just yeah, just to, uh, to support the another to support the hook. And, you know, certain things, you know, even though I was talking about getting high, but it, 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 it whatever, it kind of like, it's, it's really just a feel-good vibe. It's like, 
I swung back the juicy vibes, like Biggie did juicy. I want everybody to, whatever gets you high, whatever gets you, you know, whatever gets you happy, you know, do it. You know, you know, do do what you do, and if it, and if it makes you feel good, then go ahead. Whatever the case may be. So that's kind of what I was kind of getting off in that song. And like I said, in the visual, I wanted people to see, you know, how I was, you know, even though I was just around the Philly or whatever, and just in certain little areas and you see in the video, I wanted, you know, even to be simple. But I also wanted to let people know how much fun I was having too. So that's kind of what I really wanted. That was kind of the goal, just to, you know, be a, bring a different get high song, but have more feeling to it. All right. I feel that. So then, what is the highest point that you've reached in making music, and how do you keep that high going? Uh, my highest moment. I, well, I'm kind of still, currently still, you know, still, still, you know, still working. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna say. Uh, I mean, when, if, if he had, to, if I had to say, you know, this album, his EP here is doing, you know, is really. Blowing the, you know, blowing the city up by storm and, and different cities and different states by storm. So, I mean, right now, I feel like, you know, my biggest achievement was just getting this, 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 this EP done because, you know, a lot of people told me I wasn't going to get the, no album done, period. So, for me to just do it on my own, I, you know, left my, uh, my other late, my, left my other, uh, independent label when I was with Delaware and then for me to finish it and check on grinding and then, and put the project together. You know, you know, by myself and whatnot. I kind of that was kind of made me proud to where I feel like I arrived. You know, what I'm saying because now that I got the album out, now people can say, "Oh, well, Tori, you just don't got no no singles. You, you, you don't just got singles." You know, a lot of people just do singles, and you know, you know, you got you got to you got to bring the big boy out. You know, one, somehow, some way, you got to prove people that you know that you that, that you can just can't put just a uh, single together and, and just decide to put out EPs and albums. So as I got to that point where I think I arrived, I think I. I'm, I'm, I'm with the best of them because, you know, I just put the VP out. And the VP out is very, very talented doing numbers, uh, doing love on Spotify and, and whatnot. So I just feel like, you know, I arrived in that sense, but there's still a lot of more work to be done. So let's talk about that work. Because work is the one part when it comes to music that a lot of people don't understand. You've been referencing Delaware a lot. Tell me about the Delaware music scene and how Philly affects it. When Royal G's performs, you know it's funny because the, the reason why I talk about Delaware a lot is because um, that's kind of where I got where I really, 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 really developed my. I mean, I already have my sound, but I kind of developed my my rap sound in Delaware, to be honest. And and uh, well, I mean, I worked on it here, but I kind of did more rapping when I was in Delaware at the time because um, it was a new scenery for me, a new scenery. And uh, um, I had I had my um, I had a my, my, my ex at the time now was my ex girlfriend but we you know that was my ex girlfriend you know my my girlfriend then I was going out there and getting new 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 meeting new artists got got met, came friends with a couple of people that I met my mentor which is uh, who I talked about earlier Richard Brainiac and you know he kind of um, helped me on my way he kind of bring back my love back to music when it, when it, when I uh, met him and whatnot. And when I, when I, I, I took, I, I, I always make a laugh at this. I kind of did what Jordan did, and you know when he won the first three championships, the first three years. And after that, ninety three, ninety four, he took a break. I kind of did that with music at first, because you know I, I, I felt like I wasn't doing anything. Well, I mean, well, I, I was, I was making moves, but a lot of people were jealous and, and was standing behind my back, and I didn't know it. So you know, once I got to Delaware, the new scenery, I was more genuine. A lot of people were really hating on me. Um, they kind of respected my style. A lot of people thought I was kind of from Philly. I mean, no, people thought I was really lived in Delaware. I thought about that I was going to Delaware a lot, but I really was still living in Philly, but I was going a lot of just traveling a lot in Delaware. And I would when I did the different shows and whatnot there, I was like, no, 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 I'm from Philly, but, you know, <laughs> I told you I was from Philly, but a lot of people were like, oh, darn, you know, this kid from Delaware, everybody was being from Delaware. And the Delaware scene there, uh, Philly and Delaware is sort of really the same. Not really, it's really the same. But the only, but the only, but the, maybe the only, what can I say? I, mean, I, I only, I, it's really kind of the same. I think Philly's just a little, little more rawer. But other than, and Philly and New York are always going to be the, the raw, the, the raw music scene, music areas and music scene. Because you can never, that'll never be, you know, 
change. But, you know, but everybody from Jersey, Delaware, and the whole tribe they watch D.C., so they all kind of got the same different flows, the same, same, same stilo, but, but they all have their unique different ways. So it's kind of really no different. Yeah, I think it's, I think in my opinion from what I understand of it, because you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. It, it's, it's similar, but there always is a difference in when you come, where you're from because of the punch. Like, um, I call, I call New York the Game of Thrones because they are a kingdom onto themselves. You have Greater New York, then you have the boroughs. Then the boroughs will stand up for themselves against each other. That's why a lot of people from outside the territories don't get in. Right? Mm, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. Good one. Like that. Then, you, then you have New Jersey, who has been systematically taken out of the game because of an issue that I think most people don't acknowledge when it comes to hip-hop. And that's for another show, another time. I think Philly is uh, a Jersey's a straight lyricist. If you go to a, do a show in Jersey, it's the hardest crowd to win over. But when you do, you have lifelong people who will check for you forever. Now, right Philly, here, yes. Philly is more of raw street delivery because the end of the bar makes the middle of the bar explain the first part of the bar. So oh. you're bar heavy, right? Because okay. you got to start with most Philly rappers. It's the punchline that makes you understand the bar. That's why they're dope. Yeah. Like if you think about Benny Siegel's Mac Man, it was about a video game. But how he yeah, ended yeah. the bar made the game seem more alive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Imagine, look at the way he said power pellets in the song. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I agree. I agree. Even if you look at Malik B, rest in peace, with his song on the Roots album, um, the eyes that I hear, I see with, the ears that I hear with, now it's time to spark shit, spark, that song. See, even in how he flowed, the last part of the bar is what explained the line. Ooh. Now, Delaware is the lost child in all of it because oh, New York, yeah, yeah. New Jersey, and Delaware, they, you always ask people, well, who's the hottest rapper in Delaware? And nobody can even yeah. tell you a territory in Delaware, and that's a problem. So, ah. though we have similarities, it's that territory that defines who we are. Why do you think Philly can punch through any territory and be Philly everywhere at the same time? It's how you it's how you broke it down because it's like like you said, um, the like it basically it kind of interrupts what you basically off what you were saying. The bar, he can always go anywhere because Philly sound is so unique. I've heard different states and cities, and from down south, the, the, uh, the west coast, they say, "Yeah, man, we we respect Philly. We we highly respect Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Philly in New York, everybody always talk about them, always." Like you said, New York, you're in the class by itself. Philly, with his rawness and how the way, you know, from the, where the, the last bar uh, go, uh, to kind of brings out the middle bar and the beginning bar. Um, you know, uh, when being battle with Jada Kids, a lot of people wonder why that battle was so close. When, when Jada Kids was more skilled lyrically, but, it, but really, to be honest with you, he was lyrically was <laughs> as great as Jada. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, the bar that he in that battle. Oh my God, Jesus, Jesus Christ! I mean, <laughs> with the stuff he said, Jada was like you couldn't really believe you thought being being a battle. Listen, you know Jada Styles, the Styles, but you know them them two together is just you know and she can lose together is just unbelievable. But for being to last with Jada so long is because Larry, like you said, our ball because we always pulling on the bars and the punch line all together. Mm. So. So, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, like freestyle, like the freestyle now. Uh, well, the well, freestyle, I can't even, the, I've seen the old, uh, back to the old freestyle, with Big, with Big Tigger and them, Big Tigger and, and the old school back in, from Big Tigger, like recently back in 2000. You know, the free, even when we free, even when you freestyle battles are different now. They're not the same as they were back in the 2000, early 2000s. Now, in this era, is more schemes, which, I mean, we had a little schemes back then too, but people do more schemes, so they bring schemes, Plots and delivery all in one. Mm. So, I, so you know what I mean. So that's um, what I. Uh, that's kind of why I think Philly, Philly will always be relevant because 
when you look at you know, YouTube era, when YouTube first was really getting big on the scene, you know, uh, Reed Dollars, Meek Mill, Georgia Ad, um, Gilly the Kid, and Cassidy, and and all the street legend battlers, and from each hood, was was really like it was. It was I mean, when you look at when you used to go on Philly, I used to go in school. We look up the, the, the battles and whatnot, and every delivery, I kind of sometimes take some uh, take some of their kaboom and all. I sometimes I used to take some of their punchlines, but I would freak it out in my own way to where I could freestyle something. So I think Philly's delivery will always it would make Philly special. Like, like basically what you were saying earlier. Facts. And see, that's why this is very important because at the end of the day, Philly has always had its turn at back. Philly yes. has also been one of the, some of the most – Philly and Jersey, but I throw Jersey in there. They're some of the most stolen yes. on people in the game because people always take their styles and run with it. You know what I'm saying? And Ooh. And – um. I don't care if we go back from, to Schooly D to yes. damn um, Bahamadia for the ladies. It's it's so – Philly is so funky when it comes to the rhymes and the delivery that when yes. you come from Philly, that's a heavy burden on your shoulders because you have to represent. And shout out to ARAB because he did the same thing too. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, yeah we did. Shout out to him too. Yeah, he's like, so, shout out to him too. Yeah, so, did. So, so I ask you this question in regards to Philly love. And representing where you're from, what is the burden of a Philly MC, and how do you perfectly represent where you're from every time you release a project? Uh, you, you know, it, 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 the burden is very tough. It's like, uh, I mean, I mean, it, 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 it's like trying to be like Christ uh, at, on the cross and try to die for everybody's sins. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's not, it's not, and, and you know, and you, see, and you saw how you got knowledge, right? And you got to really, you got to think, you got to deep. It got you to, to think like, well, damn, no one ever really experienced Jesus. You know, Jesus, no one had never do what Jesus did. Or it's like, you can't experience it. If you don't live in Philly, you won't know how the, the, the burden of, of being a Philly rapper. Because, you know, the Philly people are judging so much. Uh, you don't do it like this, and you got to do it that way. But actually, it's not really a set way you need to do things. Everybody has a different stature or flow, but if that flow, but if that flow is taking them to good levels, then 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 people need support. I'm not talking about it. Maybe you maybe because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not good or whatever. But everybody has a different way of doing things, you know. So it's kind of like so the burden of being a Philly rapper is just oh my, you know the Philly people always been they always gonna be the ones to let you know how they feel quick, just like in sports. They might love you for a second. When your ass fell or don't know what you call them, they drop you like a bat of a dime. <laughs> well, yeah. That's how you, you, you see how you see that deep yeah? I know you see that deep yeah real quick. Because everybody knows Philly. Don't be wrong. I love Philly fans. I love my Philly sports. But one thing about me, whether they lose or not, I'm a diehard. I ain't going to jump on the bandwagon. But see, a lot of Philly people, I say if you won't get me, they're going to they hurt me if I say this, but. Philly people are a lot of bandwagoners. They're, they're not true to the culture at hand. They try to make they, one minute they like it, then one minute they jump off it. And that's where we kind of, that's why a little bit at one time, we weren't on top when the music scene anymore because of Philly, because sometimes our fake it showed. And, you know, now we're starting to support a little bit more now and supposed to support a lot of Philly in the artists and, 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 and which come, and, you know, they're starting to support uh, whatever, but even Ninja himself. Me, Lil Uzi, Airbnb, everybody had to leave out, out of Philly to go to ATL or down south to get big and then people support them more. And now Philly will come on the bandwagon later. You know, it's always, it's always that story. Always that story of, of, of that brand. So it's kind of hard. You know, Philly, being a Philly artist is, is very tough. But you always, but, but even in my music, I, you know that Philly love, I respect Philly, even though I, I might sometimes, you know, I might, I might, you know, something I didn't like what Philly did to me or how they hurt me growing up when I was a kid, but I've never let that, you know, defend me or defend, defend, defend me to say, oh, I hate Philly, I want to leave Philly, or I moved to another city and I and, and fuck Philly and fuck Philly, don't, don't ever talk about Philly again. I always, even through the good and the bad, I've always 
talk good about Philly and I always supported Philly and what we need to do is to get better and how we how to get better. That will always be my goal. Mm. So with that being said, let's take it back full circle. Philly Love, you actually talk about putting the violence down and bringing peace to the forefront in the song. Yes. What would happen if Philly got peaceful, unified, and moved out as one force? What would, what would Philly be like? I think Philly would be like how it was going back to summertime when Will Smith put summertime out. I think that would be really back to that, but, but, but something similar to that, but stronger. You know what I mean? Or when Motel was getting Kenny, Kenny Gamble and Huff and all of them in that era, I think it would be soulful and, and, and very strong. Uh, in the old days and whatnot, I, I kind of would feel in love because, you know, in that time, a couple of years ago, that, that it was a certain incident that happened uh, with, the, with the children at the, nurse, at the daycare or whatever. And on that block, in that big shooting, where I think mean, it, it was all everybody saw it on the news. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember, but it was a big, that big shooting, or whatever. The guy was on the, uh, he was, uh, the cops came on the block and they were, it was a shootout. Him and the guy, and the guy in the house and the cops was around. They were just shooting each other. There was a whole big war. And down the street, they came right there. And it was just a blessing that nobody in daycare got killed, whatever the case may be. And all the scene, but the cops, you know, got killed and, and the gentleman finally turned himself in. Well, the case may be, and, and, and could turn himself in or not. But, you know, I, I, that time, I, I, when all that happened, Philly went in a big the depression after that, that, because that was right on, that was very big to hear that, uh, on that block with of families and people in the consulates, saving people off the block and, and helping a lot of, uh, elderly and young, uh, families and stuff like that. And you're risking their lives to help people knowing that shootout. And for here, people are here too. I think two to three cops get shot, and then, you know, I think, I think all those family members got. I think they all were safe. I don't know if a kid got shot or whatever, a baby or whatever. But just in general, that time was very, very big because it was all over the news, and people were like, "Darn, really, in fact, it's, 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 it's worse in Chicago and and worse in Detroit, and, and you know, all that stuff that was going on." And it was like, damn, you know, really, you, when you when you went on the subways and you drove and you walked in the neighborhood, it was a different vibe. A lot of people were very depressed after that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that, that's why I called That's kind of why I did that song. I actually, the original song is funny. I wanted, it, it's a chance of rapper beat, but I actually wanted the chance of rapper beat that he did in the Olympics in 2006, the, uh, 2016 Olympics. Mm -hmm. When he goes, people, people, we the people. That, that's what I wanted. I didn't want that beat, but I couldn't find it that type of way. So what something similar to it was the, the beat in, um, on YouTube. And when I mm -hmm. found it, I said, you know what, this is the only thing I get because I did a sample of that beat. I wanted to, I wanted to sample that beat so bad, but I can't believe what he did. There's no sample of it. I guess it never will be, but I really wish there was because that's the kind of what I wanted. But I kind of still got the same message on what I wanted either, either way. So the song worked out well. But that's kind of why I wanted to to do that song because I wanted to bring love back in our in our city again because there was a lot of stuff going on with that at that, that time in the press. So that's kind of why I wanted to open the airways and, and use that song to bring people together in justice. And with that being said, everybody, let's bring peace back. Let's not put our children in danger and let's put oh. our community on our shoulders and make sure that we uplift each other and keep the sound alive. With that being mm. said, well, geez, give everybody your social media and how they can hear your music and get in contact with you. Social media, y'all, is uh, my first name, Terrell Moore, on Facebook. Terrell Moore, T-E-R-R-E-L-L, -L, last name Moore, M-O-O-R-E, and Facebook. And Twitter and Instagram is RelGs21. It's R-E-L-L-G-E-Z-21. -L -L -E -E 21 so R E L L G -E G E E Z twenty one. So that's for Instagram and Twitter. And uh Snapchat is Terrell Moore forty six. And my Snapchat name and and uh who else? Uh, pretty much that's it. And uh if you want to look for my music, um you type in my uh, my government name, Terrell Moore, uh which I see gave in the beginning again, T E R R E L. Last name Moore, M O O R E. And when you put it in the search box, I'm all over. Uh, Apple Music, Spotify, um, Google, Amazon, Tidal, um, 
our radio, Pandora, um, Twitter, TikTok, I, I'm YouTube, I'm all over, SoundCloud, everywhere. So you know, y'all, so y'all, that's all the social media, and that's all the music pages. All right, everyone. So like I'm gonna say, it's good to stream the music. So go hear his music. But if there's a song that he has that you really like, purchase the music. You don't have to get a scratch off that day. You don't need a bottle of water every day. What you can do is if you hear a song that you like, put the dollar down and spend the money because that way you show into his art and you give him a chance to give you more music. So if it's something that you like, buy it because, God forbid, we're going through storms right now with earthquakes and, and COVID-19s and all this other stuff. If the Internet ever went down and if you didn't purchase your music, you don't really have your music. So make sure you buy it so you have it, all right? Oh, man. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Back. All right. And, and with that being said, it's time for the rapid fire questions. You want to have some fun before we close out? Well, that looks good. All right, so here we go. The rapid fire questions are not yes no questions. These are questions that really show people your depth of who you are as an artist. I don't care about who got a fat butt on Instagram, who has the best barbershop, or who or who has the better guards, Philly or um or, or Brooklyn. I really don't care. What I care about is what's going to happen when you get into this game and, and make your dreams come true. You ready to go? Oh, uh, come on, let's ready. Let's see if I'm ready. First question. What song or album perfectly describes your life? And it has to be made by another artist, not none of your own music. Okay. Who's older than my life? Um, Trey Jones. All right, wait. What song or album is it? Oh, on the, on the song. Oh. Um... um Jesus. Um, what is that? Um, I think it's uh, the album Ready, the album Ready, and um, Jupiter Love. Okay, why you pick those? Jupiter Love is my, that's my, that's kind of my R&B, my R&B side. <laughs> okay. Okay, hey, that, that's what's up. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So my, my next question is, Who's the king of Philly, and why did you pick him to be the king MC over the whole state? Hmm. Well, I got to, as much as people argue with me, but I got to give Meek Mill the respect due because Meek Mill, I did open the door for a lot of these young males in uh, uh, Philly that it, it inspired them to, to, to get their music careers going up, and he opened up a tool. Uh, for, to, to make it fun and swag again and bring the respect back to the city. So i got to give me Mills. Okay. My next question is, um, if, no, you know, I'm going to change the question for you. My next question is, when hip-hop and R&B artists collab, they usually at times have made classic music. What's the best mm-hmm. hip-hop R&B collaboration ever? Oh, ever. I've been in hip hop ever. There's so many, but we got a lot of one. Uh, there's really so many, but if I had to choose one, mm-hmm. one on top of my head, I think it would be the uh, yeah, uh, yeah by uh, Usher, Lil John, and Ludacris. Oh, that's a great pick, though. That's a classic. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, it's your answer. There's no wrong answer, but that is a great, that's a classic song. When that song first came out, everybody didn't go crazy? Really? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, bring it back. Rewind it back. Lil John got the beat that made the booty go (laughs) bang. Exactly. That was a great, that was a great song that came out. So here's my next question. You're good at music. You could pick this song. What's the best remix of all time? Oh, the best remix of all time. Jeez. Oh. Woohoo, and there's so many of them. My God. Mm-hmm. Uh, man. Well, while you think about it, let's give some context. The remix is when we either change the beat to a song or add it to people to the song to give it a longer life. So what song that was remixed is the best song ever? What's the best remix ever? I want to let's let's go back to the nineties. I want to say, "Play me again." Oh, that's a good one. 
It's a classic. Every year, yes. When Diddy yeah. bring that and made Biggie on it. Don't be wrong, Craig Mack's original flow was good too. But when mm-hmm. you had Biggie and then uh, Buster and all of them, and Lil Ella, it brought a different swag. True indeed. But see, I have a question to ask you for for that. That has feature artists on there. Those are guest six teams. So you could arguably say somebody stole a song for Craig Mack and had a better verse than him on there. Correct? Uh, you could arguably say that. So, I mean, you, you, can't say, argue that, yeah. you, 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 you could argue it. But see, there are songs, yeah. there, there are songs where the guest 16 or the feature artist outshine the artist whose song it is. So I ask you, Rel G's, who has the best guest 16 in hip hop history? Guess 16 and about my mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the artist might have outdid better than the, 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 the one that's the first song was? Yep. Oh. Uh. Hmm. That's a good one. Uh. Hmm. So many. I guess the guess is very better than, than, than the original person that's on the song. Uh, boom, 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 boom. I want to say, I'll use taking, I, I, I want to say, uh, uh, we taking over by, by DJ Cali with Lil Wayne. Everybody was a feature guest on different, different, different. DJ Khaled is doing wrong, different artists on that song. But the original version, not the remix, but the original, everybody always, you know, his favorite, the favorite part was Lil Wayne's part. Okay, that's fine. So when, you, when, you, when you look, when you, when you look at DJ, when you look at that song, I mean, everybody, don't you got, uh, Akon, um, um, you know, Back Joe, Rick Ross, they all had good parts, but y'all remember, I am the beast. See me, rappers, and see me, beast. You, you just, you just remember that little way. And that, that part will always, you know, let you come to history. All right, there you go. So then, I have a question to ask you. Then, if you're gonna make your dream song, who's gonna be on the beat? Who's on the song with you? Who does the beat? And dead or alive, no restrictions. How do you make your perfect song of a who? Who I mean, who's gonna do my beat? Who's gonna be an artist? And who, who? Well, Get her alive. No restriction. Get her alive. Um, I'm going to probably use Timberland as my producer. I'll use okay. Timberland. And okay. an artist, because I have so many, but I will probably use Jada Kiss. Say that again? Oh yeah, yeah, I think I would probably use Timberland as my producer, right? And I would, and, 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 and for my artist, rap artist would be Jada King, but, but, but rap artist would be Jada King, but but R and B would be Chris Brown. All right, so then we can have them both: Jada Kiss, Chris Brown, you and Timberland. What's up? Let's do it. I All right, let's do it. We're gonna make magic. That's it. Right. Right. Out there in the air, y'all heard it. Let's put it out there in the air. So, <laughs> so my next question is this: Where would Rel G's want to hear his music that would surprise him and help him, and let him know that he made it? Where would that place be? Ooh. If I, you said hear it, or, or, or where would it or, 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 or perform it? Either way you want to take it, go ahead. Okay. I think I'll, the day when I perform at, at, the, at Wells Fargo, at the Wells Fargo Stadium in Philly, I think that's when I, that's when I think I'll come to grips. Or at the Lincoln Financial Field, like with Beyonce and Kevin Hart did. If I, if I do something like that, that's how I know I think I'll, I feel like I'll rise. All right. Hey, man. Keep working and striving towards your dreams because nobody, everybody tells you no is hating on you. The only you can tell yourself no and live with it. So, I, I, hey, if that's what you want, then you go get it. Because if you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. Either way, you're right. So it's on you, bro. All right? Exactly. 
Exactly. With that being said, everybody, we are with Rail G's. Make sure you go support them by streaming the album, uh, the EP, the album project, The Freshman, out right now on all streaming media. But make sure if you find something that you like, purchase the purchase the art. Now, Rail G, this has been a pleasure interviewing you, and we've come to the last question of the interview, which is the most important question of the interview. Are you ready for it? Ooh. I'm ready, 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 ready. I ready. always ask this question at the end of the first interview, so if there's anything you want to do, we can come back and do another project or something. Heritage Hip Hop is open, and we'll we'll have this conversation when, when, you're, when you're ready, all right? Yo. All right, so here's the final question. One day, you're not going to walk on the earth anymore, and you're going to return to the most high. Before we go to continue, may that not happen anytime soon. We wish love, um, life, and endurance on you, your family, your seeds, and anybody else that's around your family. We don't wish death on anyone. So with that being said, a thousand years from now, you're not going to be on this planet anymore. And in Philly, right, there's going to be um, the, the 76ers are going to win the championship, right? And there's going to be a parade. There's going to be a parade. And somebody's going to, um, somebody's going to flip over a car, and, 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 and the car – it's an old car. It has like a, 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 a CD, MP3 player in it because they don't even use those no more. And when they flip the car over, the car radio goes bananas. In the middle of the street, during that riot, your music comes on and people jam to your music. The most important question I ask you is, by introducing your music to a new generation of people a thousand years from now, what is the legacy that you left behind that made the world better because you did music? I believe you said how 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 you know say that the last part again how, how do you you said I don't feel that I said what is the legacy you left behind that made the world better because you did music? What is the legacy that I left? Uh, I, I guess the great legacy I left is the good uh, good good quality good good lasting great quality. Versatile music. All right, so for everybody out there, be good, be great, and bring quality to your life with everything that you do. This is Terrell from Heritage Hip Hop. With Rel G, Philly, yeah. stand up and get that Philly love. The yeah. freshmen, are, the freshmen's here, ready to graduate, and we have some years to put in. So make sure you support yeah. the man and support the music. And with that, we say peace, and we peace. out. Yeah. After hearing such a great interview, it causes me to take time to say, respect your fathers out there, everybody. We always hear these stories of men who don't take care of their children, but what about the men that do take care of their seeds and inspire their seeds for greatness? Real G's helped bring that out by not only giving his dad a shout out, but we we wanted to dedicate this episode to our dads. You know, our fathers are very special in our lives and for those of you who have children, be a father to your child and really be there. Because being a father doesn't mean that you just make a kid. It means that the child that you have created, you give them inspiration and they learn from you as their lives continue. That's what makes you a father. It's not that you've made them. It's how you inspire them even when you're not in their physical presence. So shout out to all the fathers out there. And we recently celebrated hip hop's birthday. So salute to the father of the modern hip hop culture, Cool Herc. May the most I always bless you. And we need to honor our father by doing something for Cool Herc. Using our influence in our culture to give thanks to somebody who gave us not only careers, but brought the world together under one sound so that we all may be heard and get recognized by the powers that be. With that being said, this episode is brought to you by Transparent Credit Repair, the superheroes of the financial literacy and credit repair world. If you're looking to fix your credit and get out of debt, contact Transparent Credit Repair at www.transparentcreditrepair.com and you can call them at 862-250-5122 and tell them Heritage Hip Hop sent you. Before we get out of here, let's give a shout out to our team. Shout out to Fatty's Place, our virtual assistant. Let's give a shout out to Fire Jaws, our resident MC who does marketing, promotion, and placement, to Lex Diamonds and Adiar, aka Big A, who do their own movements and shows. Diamonds Entertainment LLC, D I E M E N Z Entertainment LLC on Instagram, and The Big A Show, season one, 
on YouTube at A-H-D-A-Y-A-R and season two coming soon. All right, man, we about to get out of here. But to, before we do, you can follow us at www.heritagehiphop.com. Become a member of the website. You get the Jersey Series playlist number two featuring the old 50 boys. And Heritage Hip Hop playlist four is coming out very soon. This is the month of August. This is a very important month for Heritage Hip Hop as we drop our award show. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We have a link tree. Uh, just go there and you follow us hit the notification bells and and all the subscriptions and put likes on the videos in the comments and you will see what we have coming the award show is a very big deal where we highlight the hip-hop culture with our project of the year artist of the year and our governmatic award we'll get a podcast about that coming soon we thank you for following us we thank you for your support and we thank you for everything that you do to help heritage hip-hop grow uh shout out to just you because we are god's heritage hip-hop is part of god and that's what makes us the heritage of hip-hop and we celebrate this and you so with that being said everybody out there that's listening stay tuned for greatness we're going to episode 100 now since that we passed 50 with your help we say peace thank you and we out <laughs>